same time that I inherited the lathe from my father, I also inherited from my mother's father this steam engine. He was a steam engine engineer and uh, he built this Hero steam engine and took it to a show uh, to demonstrate that this actually works. Um, so Hero was uh, a famous scientist and engineer who lives in Egypt from 10 to 70 AD and he drew a diagram in one of his books of this steam engine. And uh, as we can see, we've built one and it actually worked. Um, so the Greeks actually invented a kind of steam engine way back 2,000 years ago and then didn't develop it any further, which is a little mysterious. Uh, they actually were using it to study the forces of airflow and you know, gas flow steam coming out of this thing. Um, the way it works is that ha the bottom part of it is made from a kettle and is put on top of a stove or a fire uh, to produce steam. The steam goes up the pipes into the sphere at the top and then comes out the little jets. And the thrust from the steam escaping from the jets causes the um, rotor at the top to spin around. Unfortunately, when I received this, it had been badly knocked around over the years and I thought it was too badly damaged to repair and safely boil up with steam pressure inside it and decided I'd build a new replacement. And that's really what this project is about. But um, then I took this thing down to the Peninsula Radiator Shop and uh, Graham there um, helped me take it apart and soldered all these joints. And you can see where there's cracks in it where the steam would be leaking out. Um, and once I got it apart, we could knock out some of the bad dents and dings in it, uh, enough at least to uh, get it to spin and put it all together again and got it working. Interestingly, there was a round copper disc um, covering up the uh, hole that was left when he removed the spout from the kettle. And it wasn't until we unsoldered it and took it apart that we discovered this was actually a penny that was uh, put on and the outside had been polished over. But underneath, on the inside, you, the penny was still intact. And from the date of the penny, we can work out that he built this machine about 100 years ago. This is what it looked like after we had polished it up and got it working. And uh, eventually I put it on top of a little camping gas cooker and demonstrated that it would work on steam. And then actually decided it might be a little safer to test things run it on compressed air. So I got an LPG cylinder and filled it up with compressed air and hooked that up to it and uh, it actually went uh, quite a lot faster just because it was getting more air through it than I had with the steam and uh, it would go faster and faster until it got out of balance and then the ball would come flying out with a vibration. You can see in the video frames how far the little jets have moved in a single video frame and from that you can calculate the RPM which came out to 2400 revs per minute. I also looked at the sound recording as a waveform and you could see the bumps of as each time it rotated around and they were occurring at the same speed, 2400 RPM. Following in my grandfather's footsteps I took it to a steam show and it raised quite a lot of interest. I did about 40 pages of calculations on this thing and um, found that uh, when the gas it, relieving the jets reaches a speed of sound it can't go any faster and surprisingly it only should take about um, 10 to 14 pounds per square inch, that's one atmosphere, for it to reach the speed of sound. So it should reach this maximal thrust uh, and uh, theoretical RPM it could reach is phenomenal uh, of course at that um, so we'll see if we can build one that's more precisely balanced, how fast we can get it going. Um, it also calculated that at 600 RPM it could produce 1 watt, and at 2400 RPM it would be about 4 watts. And with 4 watts I should be able to pump water um, several hundred cc's, lifting at a height of um, 30 centimetres easily. 
and uh, that would demonstrate that, that in fact this machine could do work, which is something that's been argued about as to whether this thing would have enough thrust to do anything, but actually it has a lot of RPM and not much torque. Um, but it could do work if it was geared down, and I thought I'd make a worm drive uh, gear reduction and have it dry an Archimedes screw, which is a, a pump that the Greeks themselves had invented thousands of years ago. Um, and I thought it would be an appropriate way of demonstrating that it can actually work. We took a trip to Australia and while I was sitting there with nothing else to do, I decided to sketch out how I might uh, build the steam engine. And so this is actually what the project is all about. Um, the boiler is spun from copper, as you've seen in some previous images, and it's fairly delicate. And I felt that um, if I was to connect a lot of pipes to it and brackets and legs and arms and things like that, it would probably wouldn't be very good for it. So instead I decided to make a um, hexagonal framework, as you can see in the sketch, with the tank hanging in the centre of it, and a horizontal pipe going across as a um, manifold with all the devices on it, a pressure gauge, a pressure relief valve, the tank itself is connected there, a tap to turn the steam flow on and off, and then going up some vertical pipes up to the rotor itself. And uh, the rotor itself has been made, spun from copper, but I haven't made all the bearings for it yet.